All right, guys, welcome back to <laughs> Coaches Chat. Uh, I'm Jimmy Al, your loving relationship coach. And this is oh, Tavia. I'm Tavia <laughs> Sharp. Tavia <Sharpe. laughs> <laughs> Sharp of Styled Sharp, and I'm an image coach. Yes. So <laughs> we're here to talk about the show Love is Blind. Yes. Girl. The so show is so much good. you talk about on this but show. <laughs> Have you finished the series? You finished the series, right? Oh yeah, I finished it. Oh yeah, oh, it's, it's so good. I told it's you, my so friend, she binge watched it all in one day. Well, it's binge worthy for sure. It is binge it is. worthy. It's very addictive. <laughs> it really it is. Like it's the so Bachelor. It was like the Bachelor slash those Love Island people slash. I don't know whatever like all merged into one and then right. this experiment where these people don't even see each other and they fall in love right and it's, it's funny like i'm you know i've seen a couple people post things about this show and like people are bad mouthing this show because like why would you want to go on a blind date and it's like oh god like do you must you must be like a homebred and how's like yes. this bacon bread all day um, because this show says so many important things. This is why I'm happy that we're discussing this because like there are so many lessons that can be learned that is missing out of dating and this and this whole thing about, you know, meeting someone without even meeting them uh, and only based off of like your own values, your own needs and really speaking to them and really mm -hmm. asking important questions, questions and not judging them by what they look, what they dress, what they smell like, what they've written mm -hmm. on their profile. Like they, it just, they, it's like they're forcing you to connect, which is why I love the show so much because you just get rid of all that stuff and then you just have the person without yes. seeing them. Yes, that's why it's what we've talked about is why it's so important to build connection. I feel like that's right. the thing that's missing in the, this modern dating society that we live in, right? With the dating apps and everything, yeah. swipe, 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 and scrolling. <laughs> like, you know, you don't even give people the opportunity because you're swiping so fast. You know, it's all about, is this person attractive or not? It's very superficial and we're not building connection. We're just trying to get to the, past the superficial right. quality of dating. And that is missing the whole point. We, this is why the dating culture is an issue and people are trying to, you know, now figure out how to manage like this right. new way of meeting. It's crazy. That's why I love right, love, right. love is Blind too. Because right. they really did ask good questions. They did. They did. And, yes. you know, even Vanessa Lachey, she even said it before they even started to, because I've been re-watching <laughs> the thing just to, you know, for myself to like build content. That's why we have this, this show. Yeah. Um, but she even says it in the beginning. She said, you know, in a swiping world, people don't even get a chance to connect. So the whole purpose of this whole thing is to, you have to rely on connection first before you really see the person. Now, it doesn't help that the cast is pretty hot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, uh, yeah. That does help. With, it would have been know. interesting to see. Right. It would have been interesting to see if they had thrown in some people that weren't as, that is you know, that were just kind of yeah. like maybe average or not as like <laughs> physically appealing, yeah. right? People, right. But I felt like everybody looked really good good everybody has a little nice so, body everybody has yeah. little nice clothes you know i want yes. to see them in their regular street clothes something out of their closet <laughs> right everybody dressed show. up you know even <laughs> when they did the engagements they were all dressed up i'm like you didn't even see each other <laughs> oh <my laughs> like, oh they're right. like these really nice Glammed dresses up. on and uh -huh. the guys are like suits i'm like you're not even seeing each other but right it was interesting because me as an image coach i'm thinking about these things and like how your image plays into it being that right. you didn't see them at all because I, I mean I believe image expands beyond just the like appearance part you know I think your image and really who you are and who like what your values are it's how mm -hmm. you communicate yourself overall so image is a part of it appearance mm -hmm. you know but then also body language and communication and that all works together you can't have one without the other you know right. so and it's really interesting you say the about um, the clothes because I really did notice like even when they met each other, 
their image really suited who they are, even like Barnett, where it's like, you know, shorts and like, yes. sure, but that was really cute. Like, it just really fit who he is, or like Cameron was always in a butt button down shirt and like jeans. Right. He really mm -hmm. dressed, and that's so important. And mm -hmm. to, they, and I'm sure they had some image styling with the show, but it, yeah. but it really fit their personality. Who yeah, they, they were, were all different. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even the women I thought dressed you know, kind of like unique to them, you know, some mm -hmm. were a little more revealing, I thought, you know, when they, <laughs> right, when they, when they kind of showed up and they met each other, I was like, oh, okay, that's a little much, but, you know, yeah. that's their personality. That amber um, dress, though. <laughs> I was I like, oh. Down. I made hips and lips, honey. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, okay, she just, you know, came all out, you know. Yeah, she but... sure did. She was trying to lock that down. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And then even um, Lauren, right? Hers, is very, she, even her wedding gown, I was like, oh, wow, it's really revealing, right. you know, and she, but she seemed comfortable with that. Right. And she did. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I did write some things down that I, I felt that was really great uh, or things to talk about. I mean, whatever you can chime in to yeah. about some of the characters. Um, so, <clears throat> I, I, I know we're going to talk about, <laughs> when I say this name, I'm curious what's going to come up. <laughs> Let's talk about what we can learn from Jessica. Oh, <laughs> Messica. Messica. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know we share the same opinion about her. I think that she <laughs> really was a very insecure person, pe right. period. Very insecure. She was unsure from the get-go. She was confused. She didn't know what she was looking for. And right. She came with a lot of baggage. Baggage, and I think, yes. Right, and it, it's okay, right? We all have something from our past, right? But it just, she just, it's, it felt like to me that she didn't work that out. And then here no. she is, she's putting herself in this experiment, just looking for something particular. And she really wasn't um, dealing with the stuff that was, you know, in the yeah. way because she met two great, you know, guys. One, I feel that, you know, he just, he didn't deserve, he didn't deserve what she put him through. No. He was a very emotionally available, which I know we're going to talk about too, because we <laughs> talked about how the men were emotionally right. available and the women were, it seemed like they were the ones that weren't, which right. was a different twist to me. But he was very open, very vulnerable. He said from the get-go, like, I put myself out there. He mm -hmm. was just putting it out there. He didn't care about getting hurt. Where she came, and she was very guarded, and she just had a major block. Because that's what made her confused <clears throat> about yeah. those two guys. And mm -hmm. it's like, and it, it really is really great what you just said, you know, like, um, and I said this before on a post that I posted, it's like when you're very clear about what you want, those confusions do, do not happen. And, yes. you know, it, and it sounds like she is a, uh, a really good example of someone. For me, I thought that she was looking for that bad boy type. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she's probably, that's what her, um, probably her pattern is in love because Barnett does have that sort of like bad boy-ish kind of going on. And for me, a red flag, a big red flag for her is if, if the dudes would have saw how much she was drinking, well, you'd see her drink of the whole show. Like she's drank so much alcohol, which is a huge red wow. flag of like her not dealing yes. with herself, suppressing these things. So, you know, when you're out on a date, like you're, Chug chugging it down. <laughs> that, that's a red flag. She was you know? chug chugging in the house. I mean, she was <laughs> when the girls were together. She was she was drinking a lot then too. She always she always had wine in her hand. I mean, I know whatever it's TV and they edit that stuff, but right. you could tell because she would slur her words and uh, oh, stuff. She, and, I'm oh. like, <laughs> and then some truth would come out. The truth talk totally came out multiple uh -huh. times multiple times and multiple then to, times. for mark i was like okay red flag red flag red flag red flag red flag for yeah. mark and he still it was like he didn't he kept seeing her without the red flags and i was right. like what are you doing dude she's it's blatantly clear but it's hard i guess when you're really into somebody you know right but it's like yeah. two, and two like he said something very early on which i'm curious to get your thoughts on this he said you know, and this is a real, this is really tricky for, um, this is, for me, I find it really tricky because he said, when I first heard her voice, I knew that she was the one. He already <laughs> made this, attached himself to her without even knowing that. And like, love, like, in some cases, 
people, and it's a rare case that I've done some research on this, like people do fall in love and get married uh, quickly, right away, but it's really rare that you go, oh, like yeah. this is my person, he couldn't let go mm -hmm. of her. He had already created this attachment to her and he just fought for her and was will um, willing to ignore all the red flags and, and, and be second fiddle to, mm -hmm to Barnett and when he already said he wanted to be, but somehow he ended up saying yes. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, right. yeah, he, he actually, I think he said that multiple times, like right. about her from day one, but I don't understand how you would know that if you don't even like, you haven't even had the conversation. Conversation, with right. <laughs> now they did have a lot in common. They totally did. They actually, they did connect on quite a few different things, which is what I'm sure then fueled his you know his infatuation for right. her oh yeah no well, and then she's this and then she's that and then this is perfect and then she was confused because she had the those same kind of connections with the other guy right. um but he was just a charmer i mean barnett is just a charmer and so yeah, he's a charmer yeah well let's he get on barnett up, it, <laughs> oh man i'm sure a lot of ladies want to get on barnett apparently <laughs> like, the, the i mean he, he knew, he's good at like i mean that's probably why he is a ladies man because he's very charismatic very charming he has that personality right that women are like oh he, all giddy and because i know that other girl was really upset the one uh, LC. remember he had yeah he had yeah. three women actually that yeah. were interested in him and that other woman was like really upset she was like he misled me he misleads everybody yeah. <laughs> he just, that's his personality he doesn't see anything wrong with it right because he again he's unclear about what he's want he's trying to feel his way what makes him feel right and, and uncomfortable and i think the reason why he ends up with it Spoiler alert, if you're watching this, know. you know. Spoiler alert time, <laughs> guys. You gotta uh, go watch it before you watch what we just right. about to say. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, one of the reasons why I think that um, uh, he, oh my God, I think I lost my train of thought, but like, Elsie's very unclear about what she wants. So right. she's just, she's following for every, any and oh, everything because she wouldn't have, honestly picked him because he she wasn't he wasn't right for her no uh, oh i was gonna say um with amber like they're both of like peas in a pod you know yes. what i mean like th that's why he felt so uncomfortable he felt so comfortable to make these like off cutting jokes because yes. if you if you look on his instagram he's very very dude you know, uh, his pants is down to his ankles and so you see his underwear he's oh. or his or He's very I need risky. To check it out. <laughs> His Instagram and Amber is very risky too. So that, that's why yes. they I think they click. They so click. Well. They're they're very similar, honestly. Right. Which I don't know if they're just gonna be like too similar and then at some point, but. Right. But I well, one thing I liked about Amber is that she was very upfront with him when they when they met. She was like, I don't have a job. I'm yep. a student, His, I, you know, I uh, have student debt. I mean, she was very clear because that is a deal breaker for people. And mm -hmm. it's for me, I think you have to, you should be upfront with these things because money is a thing that breaks up relationships. And she was very clear, very upfront about what, she, what was going on in her life. And I like that about her. Yeah. Yeah, she, she was honest, at least. I mean, and then he really made the choice based on the truth. You know, he still right, wanted right. to be with her. So that right, was his right. choice. I did think he was going to change his mind. I did. Th I, yeah. I really did. I was like, <laughs> he's going to be like, no, no. Because his, uh, his face, when she yeah, said. Yeah, he was nervous. He was breathing heavy <laughs> he, the whole time. He's like, <sighs> he did that like so many times. I thought, OK, this guy's not going to go through with it. He was really right. nervous. Yeah. And, so uh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll Who see. Who else do you want to talk to, to talk about? <laughs> uh, well, speaking of like putting everything up front, Diamond and Carlton. <gasps> <laughs> see, this I is why you got bad it. for him. You did? Oh, yeah. tell me why. I, I think because I think, you know, for him, 
the the problem was is that he he shared in the past and he's like it's almost like this perpetual like see that's why i don't say anything because this happens see that's why i don't say anything because this happens right so he can't get unstuck from that pattern of mm -hmm. nobody's gonna like me because of the truth and then he's stuck in that what he needs right. to do is go work on that on himself and heal it and really get to a place where he feels really confident in who he is that he is bisexual and that it's okay right. but he's not confident he's not confident so therefore he keeps attracting people that are going to react that way right so that's what i see the issue is agreed that you know he waited too long but at the same time i think he was just afraid he didn't want to say it too soon because he was afraid you know this person doesn't know him so they're gonna run away which is right. when his it happened to him in the past so he was just trying to avoid that but it, the truth is is that they both didn't handle it properly honestly right. they both didn't know how to communicate at all and, <clears throat> yes I agree all those things too and you know now I'm thinking about the context of the show because if he would have revealed it early then everybody in the whole pod would have known yes. and it and it would have probably slimmed his chances down of finding somebody yeah um so i get i'm sure that's probably kind of like engineered by the yeah. show in some way uh, <clears throat> however in a real life situation i mean one i totally agree with you because a part of him is not whole and complete about him being bisexual. No. To me, to me, I'm like, okay, like when I when I first got rid of LIGO, I, I was like, nobody's gonna like me, nobody's gonna love me. And I realized, oh, I need to love myself first because if I have a problem with this, then I'm looking for validation that other people have a problem with this. And right. until I became really good with myself, I didn't care anymore. And mm -hmm. a friend of mine actually helped me shift that. He was like, well, you don't want everybody. You just want the people who are gonna love you and accept you for you. So yeah, he does, I feel like he does have some work to do on, he's mm -hmm. shaming himself. He's carrying he's shaming himself. Kind of shame. Yes, right. and then therefore that does perpetuate because he's right. not dealt with it yet. You could tell because he was really not, he, he wasn't confident in himself to say, yeah, this is who I am and I own it. Right. He was not at all. He was like, no. oh, I'm worried to tell everybody and they're not going to love me. And that's yeah. unhealed stuff, you know, yeah. like you need to go deal with it because you're just shaming yourself and then it's perpetuating the issue. And that's right. why you keep, keep showing up as people, well, of course they don't because you don't accept yourself. Right. So nobody's going to accept it. Yeah, and another thing too about the whole situation is like, you know, if somebody rejects you, you know, like you don't have to like call them names and no. it's, it's like, you know, it's just the way it is. It's like you, rejection is a part of dating. It's not yes. and sometimes it does hurt that, you know, that you're giving your heart to someone. However, I mean, it's just a part of it. And um, I, it's, it's, it's something that I have learned. It's like, okay, well, on to the next, this person's not for me. You know, I've gotten myself to a place that accepting that this has come with a part of the territory. Mm -hmm. And there's no real need to get nasty because I've gotten, you know, nasty, like, comments of people. I'm like, I don't think you're for me. And they're like, F you and this and that. And I'm just like, well, thank you for saying that this now. It mm -hmm. confirms, like, you are not for me. <laughs> like, That's right. <laughs> yeah. And people, that's just them projecting their own crap, right? Because right. some you're you're being honest and you're actually being a nice person to do that. But I, I'll be honest, a lot of people don't do that because they're afraid of that. That right. like backlash or attack mm -hmm. because that nobody wants to deal with that, you know right. what I mean? But you shouldn't like you're telling the truth and you're being honest. So right. You know, if more people were like that, you know, it, that's that's the issue. And and people are not dealt with their own thing, so they just project right. um, their like, own crap. Right. Mm -hmm. Stepping into your truth is honestly sexy. Mm -hmm. Like you live in your truth if, uh, from the very connect first connection. For me, is so sexy. Even if they're saying something like personal like I have this debt or bill like with no judgment and you're just like, and you're embracing accepting like you know I remember when I was dating this guy and I told him I had you know had some debt accumulated he was like okay well what are you gonna do about it like mm -hmm. and and he was like are you gonna do this he just like very accepting of that I had this debt and he was not judgmental and mm -hmm. um and I felt I felt really free and comfortable that I can like really um talk to him about anything Yes.
and you know you're really putting yourself out there and right. the right people will appreciate that and the wrong people they'll fall away so right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now uh let's uh last but not least we're running out of time here but uh, cameron and lauren oh my god i, I really love them, them. Some I love them from the day, day one. one. When they connected in the pod, I was like, oh yeah. my God, they were really cute. I think, you know, just, and, and I loved how open he was about his feelings for her, even all the way through all the episodes, right? Mm -hmm. He's always been very open, the way he looks at her. It's like, my God. Like, I mean, he is an example. He, one, he's emotionally available, like really clear very. cut, very know who he is, knows what he wants, says what he wants. Yeah. <laughs> like, and both of them, like, even with the talk of race, like both of them, this is her first time dating a, a white man, and he's very open, like, let's have the conversation. Like, really stepping yeah. into the conversation all the way. Like, yes. Like, like, I just, like, that is so beautiful and to me so attractive about yes. him yeah. and her too. Like, they're both willing to, without judging each other, but like bringing up concerns, what are we going to do with? Like, yep. just really hashing it out. It was just like, wow, like, they're already in a good place. Yeah. Together. The way he handled the conversation with the father, who was very, right. the father was great because he was like, you know what? Like, what's going on here? Like, he just was straight, very straight, <laughs> right? And you could tell he was like in protective father mode. And then Cameron really handled his questions really, really well, I thought. You know, he didn't yeah. get triggered. Okay, well, yep, well, I want to hear. I truly respect your concerns. And he was very mature about that conversation because I'm sure he realized, like, it must be hard. You know, the dad... It's his right. only daughter, and you know she's never brought any. She never brought anybody home before. Not even it wasn't just the fact that she brought a white man home. She never brought any guy home. <laughs> yeah. So this was like the father's first time meeting anybody <laughs> just right. to be a white guy. I, that's probably a lot. <laughs> You know? I know. I, I was putting myself in that father's shoes going, okay, he's just a lot for him to digest. And then you're going to show up and be like, you're marrying my daughter. I don't even know who you are. Like, right. totally could get his world. Um, but, you know, on the wedding day, I was like, that made me cry because he became a ball of mush. And I was like, <laughs> oh, he really just... You know, he was so happy to see his daughter happy. And yeah, I mean, they're really great. And the other thing I had wrote down is like, we had mentioned this in one of our other episodes. Um, they, even without seeing each other, the flirtatiousness in their voices yes. was like very classy and very sexy, not uh, yes. derogatory. Like they mm -hmm. really kept it alive. Like it was not so missing in dating too. Like really yes. keeping that like flirtatious thing going on. And right. like the fact that they didn't even see each other, but using their words yeah. to like just pierce each other. It's, I found that yes. very attractive. And that's the whole thing I liked about this experiment is because you get to be creative in that way. And that really right. is what is missing in dating, you know, because I just feel like that's what we need to bring back. Um, and that's what I really try to coach my clients around too, is it's like, how do you create connection yeah. in a more romantic way, you know, because you're looking for somebody who you're going to spend the rest of your life with. You can't just be like half ass about it and right. just try to get to the, okay, I got to meet them. Just no, there's so much more about this. I mean, this is a person you want to spend your life with, like put in more effort because you're going to waste so much less time uh, yeah. if you just really spend time nurturing the, the few connections that you make right. versus trying to connect, 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 see who's the right one. It's right. like throwing a, you know, a dart hoping it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna, you know, it's like, why are you acting like that? No wonder you're frustrated right. or you're, you're feeling defeated. No wonder. I mean, I yeah. that's why. That right. is why. So I feel like men and women, you know, it doesn't matter, honestly. Both everybody you know anybody who's out there single and dating really needs to be thinking about these things you know right. how you can build more connection ahead of time and in between dates and all that stuff it's important you know yeah and that's a really good note um ending our conversation like really taking a time to build connection like looking at profiles flirting mm -hmm. um and like 
go for the connection, not for the, the bone, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, um, connection is everything. Any yeah, last words? Mm. Yeah, we just, you know, really got to think about chemistry as not being something that's just visually appealing in somebody like chemistry is created by the connection by emotional bringing emotions out and then when the the physical right matches right. the emotional then it's a, like then it's like whoa it's like it feels yeah. like totally different experience dating yeah. and that's what i feel like dating is missing and that's what we want to create you know don't we want dating to be fun otherwise why are we yeah. making it out to be a job or like some <laughs> right like a job <laughs> it's like a job for a lot of people but but again you're creating it to be a job right you know so you get to create the experience that you want it to be and personally i like to coach my clients in making it a fun experience so that you actually enjoy it you know and and that's what's missing you know just trying to think about the physical and the appearance aspect but it's really about creating emotional connection and that what creates the chemistry right mm -hmm. okay with that um that's our coaches chat coaches chat coaches chat <laughs> <laughs> lessons on love is blind